Hi, everybody. So it looks like the link in the program doesn't seem to work. Yeah, I'm going to send it to you right now, David. I think you're on. Uh, you might, my response. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way to get the um, to get the link out to the rest of the of the registrants. Oh, I'm afraid I, I can't hear you there, Ricardo. You're you're muted, Ricardo. So I, I nobody heard anything I said. Well, I heard you got them sitting next to you. Yeah, you did. I'll go back a little bit. Okay. Um, let's start over. I'll. I'll present briefly what Citrate is and uh, within the university, what connections we've had with uh, UCDRN so far. Um, this slides just to show some numbers, uh, main one, 45,000 students, undergrad and grad, um, 14 colleges. And uh, it's uh, one of the two top universities in Chile um, in terms of uh, complex universities that do research uh, uh, education and outreach. Um, CITRID is a, an official program created uh, within the university. It doesn't belong to any of the colleges. It's actually university-wide. And it, it brings together researchers from different areas. I think uh, this is more illustrative of uh, what I'm trying to say, we have a uh, faculty from social sciences, law school, economy and business, sorry for the typo there, uh, physical sciences and mathematics, which is the College of Engineering actually, forestry and nature conservation, agricultural sciences, medicine and architecture and urban planning. Um, and the, the goal is to 
work uh, transdisciplinary in, in a transdisciplinary fashion. So I should add to this diagram the communities and the social systems. Uh, what do we do? We identify and coordinate uh, the activities of the members of the university working or studying in disaster risk reduction topics. Um, we implement teaching and, and formative activities on disaster risk, risk reduction at the undergraduate and graduate level. Uh, we do a lot of outreach activities. We have a, a massive online course, which I'll show in, in the next slide. Uh, and we have uh, participation in, in different government working groups and, and organized seminars as well. Um, and of course, we conduct research activities and coordinate researchers on diverse disciplines. Uh, these are some of the publications we, we have. Uh, they are meant to be uh, directed to the policy makers and decision makers of, of the country. Uh, they are not scientific in, in the sense where we, we all, each of us do our own uh, academic activity. But when we come together, usually it's for, to, to prepare something for, for the rest of the, of the public, not, not for the university in general. Uh, a lot of the work, uh, of the good work we've done is related to outreach and, and uh, contact with the policymakers. Um, here are some examples. The, the massive online course is the one on the top left that you see there. Uh, and then we have um, two, two courses in the regular curriculum, different, different uh, degrees. Uh, we have one in the engineering uh, school in, in top there, which is in the basic cycle of engineering, the first two years uh, of studies and uh, it's uh, on reconstruction. And then we have uh, this called uh, general formation courses, which can be taken by, by any student in the university, in, in any school, any faculty, any college. And uh, we have two of those, one in water resources and the other one in wildfires. And we also have, uh, I think for the second time around, uh, a, a course or, or a coursework, uh, which is in the, within the law school, which is the one on the um, bottom left there. Um, <clears throat> and we've uh, done some studies for, for NGOs and governmental offices. Uh, some of those are, are in here. This is uh, has been both an opportunity and a, and a need because it, it has uh, provided us uh, with uh, close contact with some organizations and also uh, we get some funding, small but still helps uh, to get the, the program working. And uh, in terms of uh, participation, we have a representation in the National Risk Reduction Platform, which is coordinated by the, the actual Senate, the current Senate, formerly known as ONEMI. And uh, since they've uh, elected uh, a lead uh, position within that uh, platform, uh, our program has uh, secured that position in, in the two elections that have taken place. So we are recognized in, the, in, in that area as well for our work. Um, I think that's oh. Now for the work we've done with the UCDRN, um, I tried to summarize briefly what we where we were and where we are now. Um, first activity we had was in July 22nd last year. Uh, it was an online workshop. Uh, we had five thematic sessions, which are described there. Um, we brought together researchers from the UC side and the University of Chile to talk about this. Uh, 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 topics and see if there was some possibility of uh, finding uh, ways to collaborate and, and to strengthen the ties that uh, exist. Um, it was a very good set session of online workshops, I think. It, it was uh, a good effort. Uh, and out of that, we uh, were able to, to get going the work on, on the seismic resilience work group. Sorry. Um, and with that group, we had a, a more uh, focused workshop on October 21st, uh, looking to uh, 
find specific lines of collaboration in, in that area. And uh, we divided uh, briefly at that point, uh, at that point, the work in, in four areas, which was uh, basic science, science, applied science, engineering, and something that we don't have a right name for it yet, but I would call outreach and policy making, something like that. And uh, so we continue working on that. Uh, we've been currently looking at, at ways of uh, securing funding in some of these lines. Uh, there's work that's being done with uh, between John Randall, who is present here, and uh, Christian Siegel on our side and other researchers. And uh, I'm I'm working with Foreseen and some other people to try to to find some funding and. Um, so we, we get going the, the collaboration there. And the, the, the last thing I want to say about this, we're working on drafting MOU and the, the MOU is actually drafted. It's being revised by the legal department in the university right now. And we hope to have it signed some point this year. That's my hope. <laughs> Not on wood. So finally, that's uh, the uh, QR code you can uh, and the web address of Citri and um, you can follow us also on the, on the social networks uh, in there and uh, I'm happy to provide any further information that you might want or need. Yes. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. So um, we could do one or two things. If there's any immediate questions also online uh, for each other, we can take a couple of minutes. Um, we can also alternatively steam ahead and go to one of our other panelist discussions. Um, I'm kind of a Democratic kind of guy. So if there's any mm -hmm. questions, I'd love to jump on what we can, or if you want to move forward, let me know. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And also, the, you know, the MOU will be signed eventually by the president of the University of Chile and uh, the signature line for the UC system is uh, Chester Coastal at UC San Diego. We're excited about that. Uh, not only because it kind of concretizes uh, and makes uh, more firm the size of resilience partnership that we've established already, but it also lays the ground for us to expand because we understand that you know these disasters are uh, multi-themed, <laughs> um, and so we should also be kind of comprehensive in our approach. Um, so. Uh, does anybody want to particularly go next out of the three that uh, we have the uh, we have France, Spain, and Brazil? Um, yes, John. Towards the end, I'd like to talk about the APRU group. One hundred percent. That's great. Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, uh, who would like to take the baton? Any uh, volunteers? I can go next. Sure. And should I open my mic or just Ricardo? I think he still picks up, okay. unless you want to switch it off. Yeah. And it's, you it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is you. You want to show it yeah. from here? Can you, can you, So hello everyone, it's an honor to be here discussing a topic of such great importance to us, the whole society. Um, as some of you know, my name is Julia Bolveia. I'm from Brazil. I live on an island called Florianópolis, or as we affectionately called Floripa, the island of magic. Then you ask me later why I use this name, but Floripa is located in the south southern region of Brazil. It uh, is home of the headquarters of the University of Santa Catarina. And throughout Brazil, we have several um, public universities, institutions funded by the federal government. They are responsible for over 90% of research in the whole Brazil and the majority of Brazilian patents. Um, also within the Federal University of Santa Catarina, as I'm going to say, ECST, um, I am part of tuition fee postgraduate program, and uh, I hold also like a bachelor's degree in international relations, and now I'm currently completing my master's in international political economy at uh, Lufisky. Well, my research, um, I think you can go to the next slide. Thank you. 
my research is supported by scholarship from CAPES, National Research Herrera Funding Agency. The scholarships tá are pela, one of the government means of promoting and fostering the production of science, technology, Herrera. and innovation in Brazil. Um, and turning our attention to the topic at hand, like disasters, Here, I think uh, all of us are interested in understanding UFSC's key approach to disaster management. UFSC's key hosts centers that conduct research and study various aspects of disasters, such as the Department of Geoscience, Oceanography, Center for Studies and Research in Engineering and Civil Defense, uh, the Philosophy and Human Science Center, é outro as well as the Social Economics. And da I would like to highlight here the post graduate <coughs> program in natural disasters, which consolidates the scientific efforts affiliated with UFSC. Actually, one of the professors, Harrison Silva, is connected with us. Hi, Harrison. Um, and going beyond research, UFSC extension and activity is also hold great significance. Brazilian public university serve as essential hubs for the local community, disseminate the knowledge generated by the academia to society. This includes hospitals, museums, language courses, dance classes, and other impactful community initiatives. Um, last year, he was scheduled to host the Understanding Risk Global Forum. Um, it was the occasion that I met Nicole and also is of Chase Dunn. However, we experienced an unusually intense rainy season, resulting in Ufski being completely flood, flooded through the high volume of precipitation. And constantly, uh, the planet event sanctions were canceled uh, based on civil defense alerts. The truth is, Florianopolis often breaks with flooding, and as was the case of last week before I came here, when the city once again experience inundation and we're talking not only about the rain but also coastal inundations and for us is the evidence that we are grappling with the consequences of climate change which um, greatly concerns the global community as the city lacks the necessary infrastructure to be resilient to climate change and it was in context it was in this context that we began the the contact with UCBRN And the timing was very opportune to the, for the connection that we established between the World System Political Economy Research Group and UCBRN. And um, we can move forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, our partnership began with uh, the planning of a major event that could explore the team of disaster in a systemic scope. We are organizing the conference Global Disaster and World Society is scheduled for March 20, uh, 2024. The conference will bring together scholars, activists, politicians, and also representatives from the public se sector to share ideas and also analysis on the current climate crisis from a historical world perspective. Uh, we will also discuss strategies for global and local mitigation and adaptation to natural and anthropogenic disasters. It will be hybrid conference um, with both in-person and remote particip participation from national and international speakers. This in-personal segment of the conference will take place at UFSC at Florianopolis. And of course, I'm going to send the invitation to all interested parties to participate in, for the event. We are accepting uh, paper submissions until the end of this month, October 30th. And uh, moving forward to the other side of our partnership with UC, um, the partnership has created uh, opportunities for research discussion, as I had with Professor Piece of Chase done. Um, you can move forward. Um, thank you. Uh, my research focuses on climate adaptation policies to rising sea levels. Uh, sea level rise is a topic that I have been exploring since my undergraduate studies. During my undergraduate years, it was the subject of scientific initiation, conductor analysis and presentations, but then I decided to carry it with, into my master's program. And then I began by comparing adaptions measure of China and Brazil. But then after hearing the devices from my mentor, Pedro, 
um, and also hearing by local merchants, residents of coastal area, and the other uh, participants of the academic community about the impact of rising sea levels in Florianopolis, I realized would make much more sense to research on a local scale. So I'm conducting an assessment of adaptation measures and the current state. You can skip. Yeah, thank you. Um, assessment of adaptation measures and the current states of resilience and disaster risk related to rising sea levels in Florianopolis. I'm applying to I'm applying the United Nations Disaster Risk and Resilience Self Assessment too, which allows me to understand the perception of local uh, local public managers and scientists regarding local adaptation strategies. Um, that photo from the, the the past slide was like the landscape uh, of Florianopolis when flood coastal flood is happening. Uh, so uh, the research encompasses um, climate adaptation as a strategy to protect coastal communities, ecosystems, and also infrastructure from the consequences of rising sea levels. Mm -hmm. We already have guidelines such, such as like national adaptation plan, as well we have municipal laws um, such as land use and zoning, and also like a municipal coast management plan. But however, it is observed that uh, municipality uh, is not actively responding to this challenge, um, prompting us to question why is it, it is not su succeeding. Um, therefore, the objective of my research is to study um, the factors influencing the implementation of guidelines and laws, as well as the creation of adaptation measures to rising sea levels at the municipal level. So uh, what I have to say is the, re the research is recent, um, talking about Florianopolis. Um, therefore, all of your suggestions and criticism will be highly appreciated. It will be published in 2024 when I finish my master's. And with this, I am to contribute to support with um, academy and also public administration. Um, also, I have to highlight that scientific the community needs to have a greater role and uh, and the this matters in Brazil. Once academy and public administration are aligned, you can have this process of generating and applying the knowledge that we're producing in universities and other research institutions. And uh, just to conclude, you can skip next. Uh, I make myself available to engage with everyone who wishes to learn more about the topic or discuss as well as about the conference we are organizing to share on the more information. So that's it. Can I say something? Sweet. Um, some of you may know I'm a consultant in Venice, Italy. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you're being heard by, by, by the Zoom meeting. The, the mic is open. So. Okay. I'm a consultant in Venice, Italy, uh, and we have a bit of a problem. Uh, and there's a NOVA presentation called Saving Venice. You should see it uh, because sea rises usually mean you're losing flora and fauna at the same time. So we're going to be pumping water back into Venice. We pulled the ships out. We put in a barrier and we're pumping water out. That may give us 50 more years. If we're lucky, uh, but uh, this might be a strategy you look at because it's good in your research to have comparative strategies that people are looking at to combat these things. Uh, and you can go online to see a lot of my publications. Yeah. Um, may I chip in? Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing is that I don't think that Venice is that much as a good example for the problems of uh, coastal resilience uh, due to climate change or the pressing concerns that are uh, common in other parts of in other parts of the world because venice is a very particular case yes it is of subsidence yes it's subsidence yeah, no. yeah more than the sea coming in it's exciting <laughs> but you can learn something about how people attack such a problem yes i'm not saying the problem is this thing but you have to deal with work causing it yes not try to restrict and, it and, and, and i did uh new orleans you know mm -hmm. 
and change the flow of the water rather than build the levees. And that, that brings me also to another question that I wanted to address to Julia, because uh, Julia, you have, um, you, you are working on, a, on an aspect of climate resilience, which is the work from the policy point of view. And from the policy point of view, I have the impression that policymakers are hardly, are uh, strongly pressed by public opinion to act. Yeah. And they are pressed to act without yet having the tools that as a scientist ought yes. to be giving them. Yes. What's your view on that? Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I notice is like uh, good managers in Brazil, sometimes they are pressed by, you know, not only national efforts, yeah. but also like from, you know, Harry is a big man and all of this um, international efforts to apply these guidelines uh, in international negotiations and other plans, but they don't have the necessary infrastructure to do that. Like um, an infrastructure, you can count on like knowledge, you know, uh, technical ca capabilities to put that money. And when you talk about like uh, smaller cities than Florianopolis, you're gonna struggle with uh, rent, financial rent, and also with technical managers that could um, help in this. Um, Florianopolis has the benefit that they are in the same place as a, a federal university. So uh, could it be better the connection between academy and public managing, management, but it doesn't happen that often, often. And uh, it depends also about the, not only depends of like academy, but the interest of public management to do that connection. And, uh, you know, it happens like other other cities that are smaller than Floripa um, ask for, uh, you know, uh, assistance of like uh, PPGDN, such as the, the, the postgraduate program that we have in natural disasters. But Floripa doesn't have this access or don't try to make this connection. And sometimes recording interventions without this connection with the academy, you know, requesting this consistency. Um, so it also not only depends about the the financial rent and uh, the the extra tour, but also the interest of the 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 you know city to build this you know this, this structure to to improve. Yeah. Like something that I miss in Florida is uh, a particular uh, office to uh, treat the things about climate change. As I mentioned in the floatings that we face about the precipitation, they should bring this up all the time because you've lost everything in this, in this type of floods, such as coastal floods or uh, by the rain. So they are trying to do this in the what we call a director's plan. But um, it takes the time to do that and choose the right manager. So it's I just, complex. I think we're in the same thing. Sometimes you make a bit of a problem trying to solve the problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because if you try to keep the water out, you'll fail. Yeah. You have to find another way to mitigate using these natural systems or change the flow. But barriers, believe me, in Australia, we are using barriers and they last about five years. And then the sea creeps in, there's mm -hmm. a barrier, goes yeah. under. Goes under. Yeah. I want to, in the interest of time, but also it's a great conversation. I want to segue, and this time I'm going to tap on it, Andrew, because I don't think you realize that this is exactly a nice mm -hmm. through line to the kind of work and research that you've done, but also it'd be interesting to hear about uh, the broader picture of cultural resilience in Barcelona and Catalonia. Okay. So you want me to go on with my presentation? Please do. All right. Thank you. Uh, if I may, I will connect my my mic and my audio. You missed a couple. John, I think that you're unmuted. I didn't think so, but... No, I'm going to, to present. So, because I have quite a few uh, slides uh, in order to share, in order to share, where's the, where's the share feature here? 
So I, I should be presenting now. Um, I want to talk to you about the, the initiative of both the Catalan government and FIMNE to develop a portal for um, land management and uh, sustainable ecosystems management based on knowledge. And the key word here is knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> during during the the morning we have been hearing a lot about data and how difficult it is to convey the information within that data and the the key is through knowledge knowledge is the way to condensate information but uh, it is difficult to to build upon knowledge and that's the the goal of the of the pixel uh, initiative by the way pixel is uh, an excellent example of an administration and research collaboration for uh, the development of uh, of science in in the pixel project we have been about some 60 people uh, cooperating in one single project half of which were from the government were uh, uh, technical uh, government officials, and half of which, of which were researchers. Mm. And they were working hand in hand in each topic to try to devise how the solution had to be designed so that it would work for the government. The, the, the government officials' involvement in the project has been crucial, and I want to emphasize that. So to, to bring a little bit of, uh, of context, the, this problem, and uh, Julia mentioned before, uh, the the thing about climate change is that the Paris Agreement or the or the other agreements that have happened uh, in, at the international level have um, learned or have uh, stemmed from the work of on the International Climate Change Panel. That International pa Panel for Climate Change has done a lot of work. But as you said, there are much work yet to do to provide solutions because the International Panel for Climate Change is not providing solutions, it's providing the forecast of what is going to happen. But we need to also provide solutions to the, the policymakers. And at the international level, there's a, a lot of um, uh, um, conscience about that. So, in in face of uncertainty, we want we need to ask the right questions about how do we address the problems, and the it's multifaceted, it's multi, uh, po it's polyedric the problem, and we have to take that polyedrical uh, approach to every 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 problem, and in but and in general, we will not have a method that works for everything. We'll have to develop specific methods for every problem because there's not a one solution fits all. In addition, we have different uh, menaces or different hazards that are going to uh, menace our uh, our environment. They are the disruptive uh, nature and of gradual nature. Climate change in general is of gradual nature. The rise of sea level is gradual but it brings along with disruptive uh, events that uh, are extreme um, or unleash extreme forces that we also have to take into account. But not just from climate change, there are other extreme events that doesn't need to be related to climate change. Like for example, the pollution is not uh, related to, to climate change. If you have a dam break uh, that is polluted, that uh, is producing uh, an extreme pollution uh, event all of a sudden, or if we sink uh, uh, an oil tanker that is producing an extreme pollution all of a sudden, and that's not related to climate change. But it's man-made and we have to, uh, to deal with it as well. 
And there are, in our view, seven questions that address how do we uh, create and use the knowledge for the for the public policy making. The, there is the diagnostic, the, the diagnostic phase, which answers the questions of what is happening, what has been happening, and finally, why does it happen if we ever are able to answer that last question? And that's only the diagnostic phase. Then we have the prognostic phase, which is that what if and what will happen? So if we understand why does it happen, then we can make a model and make predictions of, on what if and what will happen. But then comes the decision phase, the decision phase, which is what can be done, what will we do, and how can citizens be involved in those decisions? Those are very pressing questions. And we most many times want to go to the end and involve the citizen, the citizens in, <laughs> in, in participating in the decisions without going through all the process and understanding and having a model, validated models that can support those decisions. So the concept of the of the portal that we are that uh, the Generalitat de Catalunya and Timney are spearheading in collaboration with many many other centers in Catalonia, I must say that, is um, a model that later on we have constated uh, we have um, validated that is uh, the right one, and I'm going to say why. We we have three main pillars of the of the platform. We have a pillar which is what we call the dashboard, and that has the tool so that policymakers can query the databases, can query the, the model results and, and the model themselves to provide them the data or the information rather than the data in the way they need it to be presented so that they can understand it. That's what we call the, the dashboard or the, 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 the access uh, portal to the, to the platform. Then we have another pillar, which is the database. In our case, it's a GIS-based database, which uh, contains all the layers of the registry of reality, but also contains the layers of the parallel realities we can model. And then we have the third pillar, which is the models, where we can model the reality. And we ha can have models based on science, we can have models based on neural uh, neural networks or machine learning. We can have all kinds of models. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to extend on that. The, the, the three pillars uh, system that I, that I mentioned here constitute just one vertex of the triangle that we want to, to build. And it's a triangle that involves society and involves technology. And in this triangle, we have on one side the augmented G's, which is the, the three pillars that I just mentioned. But we have also a marketplace because in order to build all the uh, data or feed all the data that all this needs to happen, it's not going to, to happen by one organization alone. We will have many other organizations shipping in and also an agora. And the Agora is the space where the decision making can happen with sufficient discussion from the public and from other uh, scientific, or the scientific community at large. And I'm going, not going to extend too much on the, uh, I'm finishing. I'm not going to extend much on the examples of what we have uh, done in the presentation will be uh, posted, seismic risk, flooding risks, uh, uh, coastal evolution, occupational patterns of the of the space and urban planning, um, sea level changes, tropospheric ozone, uh, air quality, and a short term for forecast at uh, city level at very high resolution at uh, street level resolution, and also um, occup uh, human occupation occupation in uh, natural environment, but. I already mentioned the social dimension and the need for a marketplace. And finally, the, the link with the European initiative, which is, which is called Destination Earth. 
it's a it's a very large project, 150 million euros just for the first phase of two and a half years. It's going to continue beyond to 2024, uh, all the way to 2027, and probably beyond to 2030. And it's uh, spearheaded by the European Commission, and it has exactly the same structure as we are having in Pixel, and we are involved in that. And I think it would be wise to try to uh, have bridges between what uh, de developing the European Union on destination Earth is a very in interesting pro pro project, and I think it's headed in the right direction with whatever initiatives are happening at the other side of the, of the Atlantic Ocean. And with that, I, I'm finished. Thank you. You know, um, when I had the pleasure of meeting you in, in Barcelona, we noted that there is a MOU between Catalonia and the state of California um, that actually somebody that was at our morning session, Abby Browning, I think Ghost wrote that on behalf of the governor at the time. And we look forward to branching out into a disaster resilience framework that is housed within that MOU. Uh, I think some of the very interesting research and foci that you've mentioned today are very informative for that kind of thing. So thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Gilles, uh, save the best for last to take us home mm -hmm. from your perspective in a very beautiful corner of the world. And then hopefully, let me want to mute you then. And hopefully, we'll have a couple minutes yet. Of, uh, Okay. Yes, please. Do you see my screen? Yes. So, hello everyone. It's a great pleasure, great honor. I'd like to thank you for the organization of this uh, workshop to invite me to present two things. First is the Master of Science in Disaster Management Environmental Park that we are uh, organizing since uh, 10 years and we invite some professors from UCDRN and it's a great pleasure to 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 name them Erin Nosti, uh, mm -hmm. David Douglasby, um, Nico Soon, uh, uh, Joe Lightman, and uh, 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 some other ones. Uh, uh, we are we are we are, we, we try to involve them as a as a professor. So my name is Professor Gilles Dusser. I'm head of this Master of Science. What are the objectives of this Master of Science? To assess risks in disaster reduction climate change adaptation and resilience building. Uh, this Master of Science, just like uh, the majority of the Master of Science, are two years. Mm -hmm. It is a two years program entirely taught in English that contains all the lectures for group projects for uh, a little amount of, of, of students, less than 10 students per year. Uh, what are the what is the course overview? It's written here that we uh, start from the risk assessment th methods. We are going to ICT. We pass from uh, emergency medicine, and also we include the oil and gas management. And we finish by an internship of six months for uh, the application of what the student they they learned. At the end. The course outcomes are included here. It, the students uh, mm -hmm. are able to uh, address the different type of risks and their potential consequences. They also address the technical and human and organizational vulnerabilities in order to uh, cover the human perception that influences the risk assessment. Overall, this is the main presentation of my first uh, part of my presentation, in order to save time, Nico. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I try to do my best. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a two years program. And um, yes, we, we are trying to include more and more people in this network. And we are, I think, comparable uh, with some other initiatives to build a network of, uh, of uh, competences and skills in disaster resilience. Last but not least, I want to present three initiatives of uh, some students uh, that are collaborating on disaster management uh, with us. I want to discuss of one initiative that I supervise is um, to deal with how to predict 
the emergence uh, of uh, uh, malaria via geographical information system, the use case is in Nigeria. As you might know, um, globally over 100 countries are affected by malaria. It's more or less one um, half of the people in the world that is affected by malaria. Uh, what are the main objectives? How to address a spatial distribution? How to evaluate the transmission dynamics? How to evaluate and improve the control mechanism of this disease? Mm -hmm. In other words, at the end, how to develop a spatial temporal analysis in order to analyze and predict the uh, malaria incidence in order to evaluate the changes in malaria endemicity. In other words, we set up a methodology, I don't want to detail too much, based on multi-criteria decision analysis, based on correlation matrix, based on classification methods, in order to have at the end uh, this type of uh, map this type of map is very complex to analyze, but I summarize in two words. We compare the predicted hotspots of malaria with the hospital occurrence that we have in the, in the, on the field in order to measure if the system is able to predict or no. And we have a rather acceptable quality of result. In other words, based on the use of a GIS, we are able to confirm that it is probably feasible to uh, help the prediction of, in some cases, the malaria. Why I'm so prudent? Because it's the work in progress and we need to validate several approaches because if we would be so simple, a lot of people would do this uh, 20 years ago. So I'm very prudent and humble with this type of approach. Secondly, that is also something that we target is to, how to, is to un answer the following question, how to simulate, how to train hospital dispatch with ambulance simulation, how to improve the collaboration between mobile field hospital and regional hospital. The use case is also in Africa. In other words, we are conceptualizing a scenario that there are some regional hospital elsewhere in the world. There are also regional hospital and mobile field hospital that are collaborating. So we model this system into different type of subsystem with agent-based modeling, AMB, ABMS, sorry. So with uh, some uh, digital twin approach, we are able to conceptualize and to achieve to uh, um, an agent-based modeling system by, via the use of serious game at the end, we achieve to a system of system that is able to predict the number of simulation we can have in order to train the stakeholders. As a conclusion for this second work, we focus on ambulance dispatch at the, uh, as I mentioned, we set up a methodology based on conceptualization of the uh, of the different type of uh, functions in order to model and simulate the disaster response in mainly in 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 the africa use case last but not least we all know that an hospital is an area where there are a lot of vulnerabilities we all know the organizational vulnerabilities but we are uh, trying to assess the cyber security. As a fireman officer, uh, I've been involved in several em emergencies elsewhere in the world, including in Africa. May I say that a, a mobile field hospital is an area where we don't care about cyber security. We are doing the work, we are trying to save some people and we don't care about the, 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 the dark people. However, nowadays, this type of uh, sentence is too old fashioned. Right now, we have to take care about cyber resilience and cyber attacks because the mobile field hospital is also very vulnerable of this type of cyber attacks. So at the end, may I say that the only few databases on cyber attacks 
what were the scenarios, what were the mitigation actions, what were the actions took by the people inside an hospital in order to recover, in order to mitigate, in order to come back to normal situation. There are only two databases that are available in order to have some lessons learned. So the goal of the third and last work that I want to present to you is to answer to, key, to, to the key question, how to infer some AI models and machine learning tools in order to infer some uh, outcome on the study of those two databases. This is also an ongoing project, and I, I'm sure that I will be very happy at the end to explain what we have as an outcome in order to improve the disaster resilience for this critical infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Gilles. So it gives us five minutes left. Um, I want to iterate to anybody that can hear me. Uh, to anybody that can hear me, um, that uh, we're going to follow up with uh, all of the presentations, the excellent presentations, the um, slides, and also contact information for folks who want to get in touch. Uh, we look at this as a very unique networking opportunity across um, large horizontal divides between our institutions and also to connect you with each other, but there's people that I see um, that represent different sectors uh, across civil society, academia, and, and government that have joined this call that I think would be very interested to get in touch with you and vice versa. So I'll follow up um, with all the contact information so people know how to get in touch with you. I think we could probably talk for another hour, but that time went by super fast. Um, I would like to see if, John, is this enough time to- Yeah, I guess we'll say something. Then please do, I think it's very interesting. Um, John Rumble from UC Davis. I, I will. I will mute. And are you you are muted, John. Uh, I am muted. So, can everybody see this uh, screen? <clears throat> so, this is the Association of Pacific Rim Universities, which is a com a group of the sixty leading universities around the Pacific Rim. Uh, most of the UCs are in it. University of Chile is in it. Um, many universities in Japan, China, and so on. Uh, I got involved with these people um, quite a while ago and um, more than 10 years ago because they started a multi-hazards program at Tohoku University in Sendai. And uh, you see some pictures of the people here. Um, they run a summer school every year that I've lectured in. They have a series of multi-hazards workshops that occur every year around the Pacific Rim um, and so on. Uh, I would point out that there is an international conference that is um, going to be held in February on big data for disaster response and management in Asia and so forth. And it is sponsored by the Asia Development Bank. And people can, it's too late now, unfortunately, but people could write uh, abstracts, which I did uh, do October 10th and uh, travel expenses will be paid by ADB. Um, I will also point out that this group um, just won a huge, huge award from the Japanese government. They were in competition with uh, Tokyo University and Kyoto University, the two most prestigious universities in Japan, and they were the ones that got it. And the award is for them to internationalize Tohoku University. Uh, English will be co-equal with Japanese in the teaching of courses. They will reorganize all of their institutes. Um, the multi-hazards group will play a, a major role in this as well. Um, they have done many things uh, following the disastrous tsunami in their region in 2011, and uh, it's a it's a fantastic group to be involved with. They also run the World Bo Bosai Forum, which occurred last March and will occur two years later. So every two years, they'll have this World Bosai Forum, which is um, part of the Davos conferences on on disasters. And uh, Yuichi Ono, who is the founder of that, is talking about having a um, World Bus I Forum uh, mini mini meeting here in California, perhaps in cooperation with DRN uh, next summer. So uh, you know we'll we'll know about that soon. He's trying to find a sponsor for that. They do have some corporate sponsors in Japan that uh, pay for some of their their things and uh, their meetings, and uh, we'll see about that. Thank you. Um, I think we're out of time. Huh? I would like to add please. Some what Peter said. We got one minute. Yeah, yeah, very, 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 very fast. Very uh, precisely, this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got you.
Yeah, no, that's it. Precisely, this um, this summer we had the the visit of a delegation from Japan, from the Oita University, who have been developing hand in hand with SAP a system uh, for disaster resilience and uh, disaster events uh, based on SAP and using uh, big data uh, analytics. So I, th I think th th there's, there's a theme in, in Japan about that, yeah. Um, John, can people get in touch with you if they're interested? And in, and perhaps the kind of um, sure. consortium that we have here together might present a collective, um, attractive opportunity for folks that have recently gotten funny in Japan. Sure. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody, um, Ricardo and Julia, Pere Andrew and Gilles especially, and everybody else that was here. I know we're out of time. I, I would love to keep talking. Um, we can be reached. You know how to reach us. Um, but thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Nico, for putting yeah. it all together today and for all the work you put in the last year and a half, getting it all here. So again, it couldn't have been done. No, nah, baloney. Could have been. <laughs> so we're looking forward to the next session. So um, let's uh, let's. I guess they're coming in here too, so we should get out of the way. We should get out of yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for covering that.